about three years ago, I started hearing about potential health concerns that may be associated with the consumption of energy drinks. And right up front, let me tell you, it was not ever about just the caffeine. It was about the mixture of dietary supplements and caffeine, or the cocktail, if you will. In researching the issue and speaking with numerous educators, health professionals, and representatives from local drug and alcohol abuse organizations, some of which are here today and have been with me all along, as we started right here several months ago, I became concerned about potential health risks, particularly in young people. Additionally, I was troubled about what many perceive as a lack of strict oversight and regulation of the energy drink industry. And I did feel that something needed to be done to help protect our children. My concern prompted me to introduce two pieces of legislation in the last two years. One bill would require signs to be posted in stores selling energy drinks that would alert customers to the possible health risks associated with energy drink consumption. And the second one would prohibit the sale of energy drinks to minors. This legislation did garner, as my colleagues know, national attention and garnered a great deal of debate. And I must say there was sometimes I was a little bit down about this, but when the American Journal of Pediatrics came out with their findings that these drinks were never intended for young people and are not good for young people, it was like a, a boom. So as a result of our efforts here in Suffolk County, I'm pleased to say that the entire energy drink industry was brought to the table and was moved to examine both their products and marketing practices. My colleagues and I began to realize that this was an opportunity to move beyond the notion of local legislation to educate and protect young people and all energy drink consumers on a national and yes, international level as well. Today we're here to formally announce that after months and years for me of hard work and negotiations, we have achieved something far greater than my initial legislation and something far greater. We have achieved the first step in industry-wide national reform. Within the next several months, when you pick up that can of Red Bull, Monster, Coke or Pepsi, any of those energy drinks by Coke or Pepsi, and, or, uh, that are being sold in the United States or Canada, you will see a warning label that these products are not intended for children, pregnant or nursing women, or those sensitive to caffeine. Currently, a can of Red Bull does not have such a warning. Additionally, the cans will reveal the total amount of caffeine from all sources present in the product, because those other sources do create caffeine, or caffeine. This information is not currently disclosed on the cans. The labeling changes are two of guidelines the American Beverage Association has recently adopted in response to our concerns here in Suffolk. They have agreed to a series of changes that will cover the way these products are labeled, sold, and marketed across North America and, in some cases, into Canada. Industry leaders such as Red Bull, Coke, and Pepsi have embraced these guidelines and deserve a great deal of credit for being receptive to our call of reform. Additionally, the Hanson Beverage Company, the makers of Monster Energy Drinks, have agreed to comply with all of the American Beverage Association guidelines as well, even though they are not a member of that organization. The American Beverage Association, together with Hanson Beverage, accounts for approximately 95% of the energy drink market in the United States. The industry, particularly the representatives from Red Bull and Hanson Beverage, the makers of Monster, have worked closely with me to make sweeping changes a reality, and they deserve credit for taking significant steps to address these concerns. In addition to the labeling changes previously mentioned, the American Beverage Association guidelines that the energy drink manufacturers will follow include energy drink producers should not promote mixing energy drinks with alcohol or make any claim that the consumption of alcohol together with energy drinks counteracts the effects of alcohol. Energy drinks are functional beverages which differ from sport drinks and therefore should not be marketed as sport drinks. Energy drinks should not be marketed in schools K through 12. 
Beyond the ABA guidelines, perhaps for the first time, the United States Food and Drug Administration will be engaged in an effort to define these products. While calls from physicians and officials for further regulation of these products by the FDA have received little response, now the industry itself, to their credit, is requesting the FDA to get involved. Red Bull and Coca-Cola Corporation will jointly reach out to the FDA requesting that the administration develop a statement of energy for, a statement of identity for energy drinks. So this is an important day. What started out as local legislation has become national reform. My great hope is that we will no longer have to contemplate local efforts to regulate energy drinks. And we will, of course, remain vigilant and, sh and make sure continue, we will continue to monitor to ensure the adopted guidelines are followed, and I'm sure they will. Once again, I do commend the manufacturers, in particular Red Bull, for being responsible to our calls for change. This, start, this process started out with a desire to help protect and educate our children and local residents. That will always be our mission, as it often is in the legislature. Today I'm proud to say that through our efforts here, we have taken the first step in accomplishing a great deal more than that. We will educate and help to protect the nation's children as well as consumers through North America. I'm here today with many of my colleagues, and I thank all of you, and certainly the drug and advocacy groups that were here with me six months ago when I introduced this. I thank you all, uh, my colleagues. Did you want to say something? I simply want to congratulate uh, Legislator Nowick and congratulate the industry for hammering out a very, very sensible uh, compromise here. And uh, uh, again, uh, history's made in Suffolk County that local legislation has uh, uh, affected a national uh, problem. Thank you. Yes, I may. I can't I've definitely with really really Officer Vivian Valeria Fisher. I'd like to congratulate Legislator Noah. She has been so persevering. Her perseverance has been tremendous. And she has brought some super sized corporate entities to the table. And, uh, and congratulations to them for doing so. Because the bottom line is we want to educate the public, not necessarily just to regulate the public and, uh, and ban everything. We, we want people to make use their own good judgment, but they need the information in order to make that good judgment and make decisions uh, based on good parenting and good education. So Lynn, I, I think you've achieved the goal and, and, and it's a home run for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me echo my colleagues in uh, congratulating uh, Ms. Nowick in uh, this, this wonderful victory for our children. And that, uh, you know, oftentimes uh, we, we hear in the legislature in Suffolk, we hear that, you know, you're overstepping your bounds, that uh, you are trying to ban everything or question everything from, from ice to uh, to uh, Red Bull, to uh, uh, Dropside Cribs, and the list goes on and on. But the reality is that it is here on the local level that change is made. And this is the beginning, this is the genesis of legislation that crisscrosses our country. And I'm just so proud of Lynn and uh, her efforts, because really she was. She was tenacious. She was the one that was out front saying, you know, come on, Wayne, vote for this. You know, and I'm going, well, aren't, aren't we stepping on big business? I mean, isn't this, isn't this too much? And the reality is she moved the ball. She moved the goalposts. She did what she had to do to make change in this country, and congratulations. I just real quick, I want as a, as a colleague, as a friend, as a legislator, I want to congratulate you. As a parent, I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is it's truly a remarkable achievement. Who would have thought that someone could come along, a, a, a legislator from something, and change the national labeling for energy drinks. It really is remarkable, and I just really have to applaud 
I have to applaud legislator Noek for taking this issue on. It's really an enormous, like I say, a monster of an industry. And, you know, to be able to achieve this today is really, is truly remarkable. And it's that tenacity, that drive, that passion to try to do something good to protect our children um, that led to today's announcement. And, uh, I, you know, I, I've been a co-sponsor on this, but Lynn has done all the work. And I just am really proud of her today. And uh, it's a good thing we did. Thank you. I'm Jeff Reynolds, I'm the Executive Director of the Long Island Council on Alcoholism and Drug Dependence. Um, I could only imagine what would happen if any of us drug and alcohol uh, prevention advocates here called up Red Bull and Monster and said, we want you to change your labels and, and by the way, change your marketing. Um, Lynn has done something uh, incredible and while the legislation got us all to the table and, and to have the dialogue, the change, as she's noted, goes far beyond what was originally contained in the legislation. You know, here in Suffolk County and in Nassau County as well, we still face a crisis of underage drinking. And as we head into the summer months, this has become uh, the product du jour along with alcohol. And we know the data tells us and our experience day in and day out tells us that when kids mix alcohol with energy drinks, it's an exceptionally dangerous combination. So as we work to eliminate underage drinking and we look at picking this problem apart piece by piece, these energy drinks are part of the equation for many young people. This is like stepping on the gas and the brake of the car at the same time. And the consequences are landing too many kids in emergency rooms. I'm glad that we're here today to ensure that we can begin to make some headway, both in dealing with underage drinking as well as the overall consumption of these drinks. So uh, thank you, Lynn, and thanks thank for you. all your colleagues. Thank you for your Thank you for your support, and uh, we started in Suffolk County. We did it. Yeah.